you, Snyder. So good afternoon, everybody, and uh, you know, good afternoon. And it's a uh, uh, thanks a lot for uh, uh, you know uh, being part of this earnings call, and thanks for your uh, support and trust on the brand as we transform this uh, 3i into the new 3i in this journey, which we have now started in the last nine months. Uh, so I will just quickly take you all through a few slides and then maybe we can open up uh, for conversation. So Schneider, if you can move on the slides, please. Yeah. So uh, I'm just going to maybe skip these slides, uh, Schneider. Let's move on uh, our vision, mission, and this is a quick snapshot on where we are as an organization, uh, and uh, as we speak, we are closing on to almost 5,000 uh, people. You know, uh, we will exit this year, and uh, uh, and we'll just you know move on to the next slide, Snyder. A quick refresh for all our investors and shareholders in terms of the in terms of the services we offer, uh, right from application uh, application development, testing, infrastructure services, cloud first. And also a lot of next generation services we are kind of you know building and uh, uh, these capabilities. We'll talk more about them in the coming slides. Uh, anyone more? Yeah. A quick refresh uh, on this slide uh, for all our benefit uh, because now we are slowly moving uh, as uh, this is the third quarter of this uh, new organization and the new management team. Uh, most of these strategies are now starting to get implemented. I want to kind of dwell upon uh, Q3 especially has been a critical quarter for us because as we are uh, running our businesses, we are also investing in our grow and build strategies, which is extremely um, critical for our organization. I'll spend a minute on this slide for uh, benefit of everybody. So the run organization or the run strategy is something which uh, 3i Infotech post carve out uh, effective 1st April is what we call as the run organization. It is the services business which we inherited as a uh, as an organization post the carve out of the product uh, division and the service lines we are servicing and the customers. That's a run organization. And our focus on the run organization is to fortify the run, uh, drive improvements in terms of margin enhancements, try and see how we can kind of enhance our profitability because today the run PNL uh, literally funds the remaining part of the organization in terms of grow and build. I'll touch upon it also as we kind of delve deeper into the Q3 results as well. The grow organization is the, the engine of a growth for this company and where we are building the, the new service lines um, building our next generation consultative transformation uh, made, uh, mission led sales organizations, uh, which is predominantly consulting led, transformation led, where we kind of want to work with our customers in solving their problems and being an end to end integrator and an orchestrator. So that is where we are now investing. Uh, and this is going to kind of you know help us uh, drive the growth uh, in our coming years. Second, uh, uh, the second thing is also in 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 in, in, in terms of uh, uh, the ability to change the revenue mix from the run to grow. If you look at it, uh, we will talk about it in the numbers. But the run cross margins are less for us as an organization. It's very important. We change the mix of uh, revenue and grow is going to drive that. The build focus is fundamentally because if you look at it. Uh, we came out of a CDR in uh, March 31st. We sold our product division. Uh, so it's all the family jewels and the crown jewels as well. But the good thing is we have a better balance sheet. We are debt-free. But now we need to rebuild some of these, uh, 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 you know, value-enabling assets for the organization, which will differentiate us in the future. So that's the build part of it, where we want to build new products, technologies, new IPs, uh, incubate startups and all that good stuff. We, we kind of talk about that as well. So this run, grow and build. But the key theme I want to leave with all of you is that uh, we should keep in mind that our company as we kind of, you know, build and, you know, uh, move forward, we are using our run PNL right now to fund our grow and build. So that's the way we kind of read our results because it's very important the way that we want to kind of take it forward. And then these lines will merge. And ultimately, we want to look at how run plus grow will be profitable, at least in the coming quarters. Any more? So quickly, I want to touch upon the high uh, the high notes in terms of the business updates for you all. Uh, 
in terms of the uh, uh, the, the strategy, if I may uh, look at it, uh, one key accomplishment in Q3 has been that our ability to kind of, you know, we were able to uh, sign uh, a, a definitive agreement with MDEC Malaysia. Uh, this is a very important, critical way forward strategically because uh, if you know the last quarter we spoke about our alliance with Oracle uh, because uh, the Oracle alliance is very critical for us uh, in the uh, 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 in, in, in terms of the entire uh, uh, strategy in terms of uh, Asia and Asia, if you look at it, from that perspective, uh, Oracle was a very key strategy. We wanted to stay invested as Oracle as an arrowhead. We launched our new Ray 3i plus uh, Oracle powered uh, services uh, in uh, ASEAN and we are building a sovereign cloud in Malaysia. And now the third part of it is now we are tied up with uh, MDEC Malaysia. Uh, so this is a three-way partnership gives a huge advantage for uh, 3i in the uh, ASEAN territory. And uh, uh, this is going to kind of, you know, uh, set a new line of business uh, focused on mid-market and SMB in uh, in the ASEAN territory. So this is a very, very key, uh, you know, uh, progress, which I want to report back to all of you. The second is uh, we have been talking about resident engineer program. It's very important that, you know, uh, we have to quickly onboard uh, these entrepreneurs, this resident entrepreneur program, I'm sorry. And we have, uh, I'm happy to kind of, you know, uh, share that we have onboarded two resident entrepreneurs. In this program, we give a very unique opportunity to bring in entrepreneurs and within the frame of a large enterprise, uh, you know, corporate, uh, you know, environment, we want to kind of, you know, build next generation technology. So we have cognitive computing services, which is kicked off. And uh, we are now starting to build uh, these teams. And the teams are now starting to build the next generation products and platforms uh, under leadership of a uh, resident entre uh, entrepreneur. Similarly, also in education and edutech as well, we have on onboarded a, a resident entrepreneur who's building this entire end-to-end -end next generation cloud first, digital first. Uh, a platform which could be a kind of a path-breaking uh, technology for uh, mid-market universities and uh, uh, a group of schools and educational institutions across the world. So these are the two updates which I want to talk about of the Resident Entrepreneur Program. Uh, the, 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 the third thing which we have been also talking about uh, in line with our new 3i, which is uh, Incubate, Innovate and Invent, uh, we spoke about accelerating um, um, Accelerating, uh, accelerating the entire uh, in terms of uh, the, uh, uh, the the pace of next generation technologies and the build initiatives. Uh, happy to announce that we have brought in two uh, startups um, on which we are now building our unique propositions. One is in the SD WAN and SASE technologies. And the second is also in terms of, you know, blockchain powered or video content, uh, lifecycle management in terms of uh, uh, privacy, authenticity, and the, all the capabilities of blockchain. So this is a very important progress in the strategic direction. Uh, these are uh, laying the seeds and foundation for the coming uh, quarters where we'll be able to build our uniqueness around this uh, uh, strategic interventions. Uh, coming to the business updates, uh, which I think uh, all of you will be um, uh, eager to listen to in terms of, you know, one is definitely we've been talking about the large deal. We, we, we did a, a press release and very happy to announce our first large deal in U.S. with Memboros. And uh, this uh, uh, is, 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 a, is a large deal for 3i in a very, very long time. You know, we, we kind of clocked this deal, five-year contract, $20 million, uh, a potential to grow up to $30 million. It's very unique because it's a convergence of a cloud in a buck a solution of ours in terms of transforming our customers uh, entire cloud environment. Uh, second, also, uh, 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 second also is in terms of uh, ability to uh, uh, bring this convergence in terms of these service lines, and which will also be able to kind of uh, give us the uh, a huge uh, change in revenue mix. So that's very important for us uh, in terms of this particular deal in the US. The second also, when I'm, I'm kind of you know. Uh, 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 we will probably announce shortly. We have been kind of shortlisted in a very large, uh, you know, uh, deal uh, in Indian PSU, and uh, uh, which is also a kind of a large deal in terms of sixty million dollars revenue, three-year contract. And uh, 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 then, if, if you if, if you look at the uh, the other key highlights, if you look at it, 
Uh, I don't want to get a you know call out right now, but uh, we are already in February. Uh, we have just got six, uh, sixteen, um, you know, six more weeks to go uh, for the year end. Uh, so it looks good. Maybe first time uh, in uh, in uh, in a three I history in the last five years. I would say probably uh, we will be growing at a minimum of ten to eleven percent uh, over our last year's services revenues exit. So which is a positive. Uh, of course, we have to work on our. Other aspects in terms of your uh, costs and margins, but I think that the good part is that the revenue trajectory is now taken off, and with the grow engines, I think this is going to kind of you know uh, uh, take off, uh, you know, in, in, in a very very uh, aggressive way. And secondly, also our focus is not going to be on you know top line. You know, I was looking at some of the uh, you know uh, chat chats with some of the shareholders have also been uh, uh, sharing kind of those distracting, but I'll, I'll take it now. For example, our focus is. Though we have a very clear a million dollar a billion dollar goal uh, by 2030, our focus would be on margin and EBITDA because the entire game is changing from a top line growth towards margin and management. Any digital company, automation company, which is driving transformation, has to only measure bottom line. Bottom line will be the way forward because technology is going to cannibalize top line. So let's be clear on it. Maybe I'll take those questions. I, I think you know somebody was just chatting, so I just I thought I'll just kind of uh, talk about that. Uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll pause here and uh, maybe uh, delivery excellence. I would request uh, you know uh, Parish to kind of you know talk about it because he's passionately driving some of these uh, improvements projects because it's extremely critical for us as we are building uh, for the future, accelerating growth. We also have to keep a clear eye on our costs and uh, I'll leave it to Harish to kind of expand on the delivery excellence. Uh, good evening, everybody. So yes, there have been some messages that has been going about the top lines, the bottom lines uh, for the organization giving guidances and all. Uh, we are cognizant of the fact that uh, we have to improve our top line and uh, also optimize our bottom line. So as Thompson has been giving various inputs, about how, what are the measures we are taking to improve our top line. Uh, internally, we are taking very uh, serious efforts to ensure that there is cost and, and waste reduction in the organization. So we are tracking utilization of both billable as well as unbuilt resources to the last resource in each and every LOB, each and every geography. So it's though it's three quarters as an organization, new 3 a Infotech, we are getting all our acts together and we are having various, various initiatives being driven across verticals and horizontals. So a few things, few to be uh, listed here quickly is we are trying to ensure that a lot of manual activity which gets done in the organization, especially in the GA, that's the general administration cost, gets done by tools and automated so that like there's lesser manpower required. We have substantial headcount in the GA part of the PNL. So we want to ensure that like we have uh, the right number of people doing the right job rather than uh, doing it manually the way it has been uh, traditionally done here. So that's one key area that we're doing. We are implementing a fresh new ERP, uh, Oracle NetSuite. We are getting Salesforce implemented. We are also uh, implementing over three, four operational support um, tools where for O2C, P2P, uh, source to hire, so on and so forth. So, those, so all these things are like uh, being implemented as we speak today and will go live in Q4. Uh, definitely. So that's what we are doing. Uh, we're moving most of our servers to clouds that we are uh, in-prem servers to cloud so that like we can uh, ensure that those costs get reduced, reduced and the cloud setup that we are doing for the business, it gets utilized for internal consumptions and we have uh, support uh, costs reduced for that substantially. Uh, we, uh, margin enhancements programs, we are going project by project, account by account, uh, for each and every geography, for each and every LOB, questioning the viability of this project. So by end of Q4, we will be either having get well plans for projects which are not doing so great in terms of the expected benchmark profitability that we are doing, 
uh, or like we'll be exiting out of those projects. So that's a very conscious call that we are taking as an organization. In fact, we already started practicing that in a few geographies which, uh, details, which I don't want to get in right now. So in addition to that, as we grow, we will be needing substantial uh, trained resources, which is like uh, becoming a little bit of a challenge in this great re resignation era that we are going through. So proactively, we are building um, competency centers in tier three, tier two, I would say tier two, three, three cities. And uh, across, like we started with uh, picking up a, a competency center down south in India. And uh, that's the first one as a proof of concept, we are doing it and it should be live maybe in a month or two's time, wherein we're, we're planning to have at least 100 uh, people uh, team, which will be trained on the upcoming technologies that are hot in the market today in demand. So we have in-house development uh, capabilities and uh, bench available when we have when we are getting into uh, big projects as we move on so uh, finally the big ticket items in terms of the build that we are planning the next gen technologies uh, the cognitives the ai teams also have uh, been recruited hired and they q4 or Q1, we should should see revenues also coming in from this technology. So not only investment, but investment we are doing there. We are also seeing some revenue trickling in uh, from these technology, uh, these units also. So that's generally the uh, approach we are taking towards delivery excellence. There's a lot more to be covered, but I think for this forum, like uh, for this session, we'll uh, limit it to this and uh, hand over to Thompson back on the customer thanks, thanks arish thanks a lot and i think the key message for all of us is also uh, within delivery and uh, operations is that we want to practice what we preach outside so most of the technologies which we are incubating we are now trying it on ourselves and you know we are our first customer and uh, harish and team are driving it very aggressively across the organization thanks harish and uh, with customers uh, also we got in uh, new logos and uh, one of the other thing also, because I've been watching some of the chats as well, you know, uh, there are some questions on, you know, reduction on revenue, which has happened. And I know the reason is we have taken a very uh, careful call after two quarters, you know, because some of the legacy accounts we want to exit, we have exited. If you look at the customer slide later on, you'll see that there's a drop in number of customers. So customers who are non-profitable, we are ruthlessly exiting very, very clearly. There's a clear refocus on our customer strategy in terms of, you know, named accounts. We want to do business, very clear existing strategic accounts, which we want to grow. And all the standard, you know, customer engagement practices have been put in place. So in terms of even the revenue drop as well, you know, because very clearly we want to exit non-profitable account. That's the very, very clear. And I said the focus will be on margins, margins, and margins. So for, I just thought I'd just respond to one of the chats I was just seeing, you know, which was just coming. Let's move on, Snyder. Okay, uh, so uh, this is uh, our uh, yeah. This is the as reported uh, uh, financial numbers. You know, if, if, if you look at it, uh, you know our uh, revenues uh, is uh, you know uh, one sixty five uh, uh, crores for this quarter. And uh, key key headlines, which I want, want to probably highlight uh, here uh, for benefit of everybody, is that you know we had a, and you know maybe uh, Sanjay can also help me in this. We had a one-time charge of almost like uh, nine point six crores. Sanjay, you want to kind of highlight on that particular charge uh, in this particular slide, please. Sanjay. Yeah. Sorry, Thompson. Uh, yeah, this, uh, this nine point six is a crore is an exceptional item uh, for this quarter due to the FCCB's you know early redemption. Uh, that's why the charge has come into the PNL. Uh, but uh, yeah, due to this is uh, charge is what we have. You know, uh, our our PBT is kind of uh, lower. Uh, you know, the last quarter. And primarily due to this, and and due to the the tax expense, which we anyway expect tax to be on a the ETR to be on the lower side in in Q four. 
Yeah, thanks, thanks, Sanjay. And also, see the the other part which I want to kind of you know uh, share for the benefit of everybody is also you know if you look at it, you know the the common question in everybody's mind is you know we we kind of uh, down twenty two point six this quarter. So one is uh, Sanjay explained about this uh, one time charge which is part of the uh, our legacy in terms of our. Uh, uh, you know, FSAV redemptions. The second thing is also very clearly, if you look at it, we have been funding our grow and build businesses from the current PNL because we need to kind of, you know, reorganize ourselves in terms of uh, uh, the organization structure because the organization structure, we still have our old subsidiaries which are mapped to the run organization. And in fact, I saw some question also in terms of, you know, subsidiaries which we have across the world. The good news is that we've got some big foes who are advising us right now to kind of, you know, uh, get this uh, new structure and hopefully this new structure will be in place for us effectively in a new financial year. So we'll have a very clear run structure and a growth structure and a build structure. So it's very clear. All our investors and shareholders can see this very, very clearly. Right now, because it's all in that one run. So what is happening, all the investments which we are also making for the grow and build are in the same p &L. And uh, see, for example, I'll give you a small example. All the build investments we have made now, which is very critical, critical from the long-term uh, survival and existence of this company are all part of this PNL, and in fact, we need to kind of capitalize that end of the year because we are building products and value, uh, which we'll probably uh, capitalize at least. If you look at it, almost to the tune of 5.1 crores, uh, we have invested so far in all the next-gen technologies we've been talking about right now. So, secondly, also the grow investments. Also, if you look at it, um, uh, if you look at it uh, from a grow investments also. There is uh, very clearly around nine pros or so we have invested in the grow infrastructure because not grow is not just the sales organization or the pre-sales. If you look at it, uh, we, we have, you know Harish spoke about um, you know uh, COEs we are building today. So we need to kind of build proactive uh, competency centers. Uh, train them on Oracle competencies or train them on Microsoft competencies or whatever, so that we have billable resources available to be deployed in managed services projects. It could be on transformation projects. So these are all investments we have to kind of uh, invest up front. So if you look at it broadly, the 22 crores, the way I've explained it, minus the one time, you know, kind of 12 crores is investments very clearly across grow and build. Standalone, if I look at a run, it is a profitable business. You know, it is a profitable business. It runs profitably. But the question now is that, you know, the tight rope walk we need to make in terms of running a run profitable business and also investing in grow and uh, build for the future. And the endeavor of the organization is that to see, ensure that uh, at least by Q4, Q1, we'll be able to at least be run and plus grow positive. So that's what we're working hard. We have to get our our cost down, we have to kind of eliminate the waste from the systems, we have to eliminate, uh, you know, any other uh, cost so that we can fund them, fund the grow and build in parallel without leveraging our balance sheet. I think that's a very important point. You know, somebody is also, I saw another question on the balance sheet. That's a positive. If you look at the balance sheet, they're very positive today. If you look at it, we are debt free. We are not leveraged it. Uh, we still have, uh, you know, uh, receivables uh, 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 from uh, which we need to get from our deal as well. So at least by Q4 end, we'll have a better view in terms of our uh, uh, cash uh, reserves as well. Uh, so that's the positive uh, from our organization perspective, you know. Uh, so Harish and uh, Sanjay, you want to add anything on this particular slide? Yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, no, I wanted to add uh, one more element that, you know, we have seen, um, you know, and been working upon uh, implementing the DSO, uh, which have been uh, in, in a, in a, you know, in a reducing trend and which has improved by, you know, 10 days, that that's been a positive sign. And uh, I mean, earlier days we could see because of the COVID impact we had, we had an impact in the earlier quarters, but now uh, things are improving because of our, you know, focus in that area and, uh, and a lot of improvements in the way, uh, you know, we are planning for our recovery, especially in India and, and the old territories. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that's a very important uh, point as well, you know, Sanjay, because that, that's really helped the cash flow going for us. The collection rigor uh, is helping the organization uh, even without, you know, uh, uh, incurring new liabilities and limits. So that's very positive for the organization and, you know, it will help us. Uh, and, and also, the if you remember the last uh, quarter also for the benefit of uh, our investors, uh, we took a proactive uh, you know, hit on uh, slow-moving debts. As an organization, we want to kind of ensure that 
uh, on a on a good GRC uh, uh, policies, we kind of took this uh, proactive hit of almost 14 crores last uh, uh, quarter as well, and we are tracking very closely on that, and hopefully we'll be able to kind of you know reduce that uh, uh, as we exit uh, this year. Now let's move on, Snyder. So again, uh, it's a slightly a different cut, a very similar, uh, 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 but more from an internal view perspective. You know, just gives a, a little more uh, details into the the, the, the sales cost, uh, the in terms the PDDs, which is the the provisions we have made uh, for uh, uh, the provisions we have made for in in, in terms of slow moving debts. Uh, we have the build cost, so this clearly kind of articulates uh, what I've been uh, talking so far in terms of the other costs which we have to incur and balance out. And uh, uh, broadly, if you look at it also in terms of the normalized EBITDA, it looks positive uh, because exceptional items are one-time items which we had to take a hit because of the deal and a lot of followers from our last year's uh, post-deal uh, scenarios. So most of this, if you look at it normalized, we look at it, we are still positive. Uh, that's the way we look at uh, this. So that's the good news. So if, you, if, you, if, you look, if you read this uh, from that perspective, yeah. And uh, I'm not going through most of the points. I think we have covered. So let's move on. Um, so a quick um, geo mix uh, in, in terms of the geography mix uh, headlines for everybody, because the next question could be from a geography mix. So we kind of uh, requisition some of our regions, and you want to kind of you know uh, use this as a very clear strategy. The India business region we call it the IBR. I used to call it SAG before. The global business region is our North America, UK, Europe, and Middle East and Africa. And emerging business region is ASEAN. And uh, these three are, uh, as an organization structure, we have uh, uh, PNL reader, uh, leaders, uh, regional geography leaders who lead this. And uh, we have Shushank who leads the uh, India business region. Uh, we have uh, Sax Krishna who leads our global business region. We have Sudeep uh, uh, and Colin Song. Who, we have, we have, uh, you know, Colin uh, and Sudeep lead the uh, emerging uh, business region. Sudeep also drives our large deal uh, strategic deal acquisition organization horizontally globally. So that's kind of the, the market where we are now, uh, how we are uh, uh, leading the organization from a market perspective. And uh, some quick action plans in terms of, uh, uh, which also with uh, uh, proactively we're looking at it, you know, uh, how we want to kind of, you know, uh, optimize cost and increase revenue. And uh, one of the initiatives if you're running in Q4 is uh, to see how we could probably optimize spans and layers and try and make a more, um, you know, uh, light us, uh, swifter organization, even AAA, which is an application automation uh, uh, analytics organization. We are also looking at how to increase the revenue per employee, which is very, very important metrics, and see how we can probably look at uh, reskilling and, you know, uh, right skilling our people and see how we can probably increase their uh, billing rates is a very important uh, aspect. Uh, uh, we are looking at it. And uh, and also continue with the exiting uh, non-profitable uh, accounts uh, very very clearly because uh, we, we 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 do not want to do any uh, you know uh, accounts which are lower than our gross margin targets based on whether it's a country 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 to country model or a offshore uh, delivery model or a digital led delivery model. So we have now set our new guidelines. Uh, typically, in the grow businesses, we want to set uh, very clear guidelines for ourselves. Uh, the country-to-country -country model across the world, which is the typical domestic business, which is whether you do it within US, UK, or India, or any of the geographies, we want to ensure that we don't want to do any business less than 18% GM, uh, very clearly. And uh, when we have a more a digital mix, a humanoid mix, and a near shore, offshore, we want to do, um, we do not want to do any business less than 35, 30 to 35% gross margin. So this will be a huge change from where we are. If you look at our run businesses, where we are now, um, you know, around 14, 15% uh, GM, uh, we want to ensure that, you know, we do not want to do any of these businesses less than even 18% GM. So very clear uh, direction, and we will exit any of these businesses which are non profitable. So that's a very, very clear uh, strategy as a company. And um, broadly, I think, you know, I kind of uh, covered everything. If, if you look at the emerging business, I, I, I touched upon uh, that uh, the entire Nure 3i plus, uh, 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 you know, services which we launch in um, KL will be an important boost to our SMB strategy also, because as in parallel to our enterprise and mid-market, we also want to launch our SMB strategy. We'll talk about more of it in our Q4 once we launch it. But SMB will be a key strategy for us where we want to offer pre-configured, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, business process as a service, a software as a service, any of the things as a service powered by a new uh, platform. So that's the way we want to kind of, you know, head in the kind of the volume business in terms of uh, uh, from our overall uh, uh, SMB segment, if I may put it. Yeah, let's move on. So quickly on also on the, the industry cut, you know, uh, predominantly, you know, uh, businesses have been with the uh, BFSI uh, segment, you know, probably if I look at both put together, it's predominantly a huge amount of our business come from BFSI. And uh, more or less, our revenue mix has been constant across because it's pretty, pretty, predominantly the run business and the grow is now just, um, you know, stepping up and we are now starting to get our new businesses uh, in the grow market. So if you look at it from a grow perspective, you know, the focus area very clearly, we want to be super specialized even BFS because BFS is a very large area. Within BFS, we want to stay focused on credit unions because we have existing customers in US and in credit unions, uh, mortgage and capital market. So that's an area where we want to stay focused. We want to kind of get deeper into insurance, build some COEs, try and see if we can be an end-to-end -end orchestrator for the insurance industry because it's a huge opportunity because some of the industries have a lot of legacy systems. There's opportunity to offer, you know, uh, an ecosystem around uh, a legacy uh, core technology. So we want to kind of build some COEs around them. Uh, definitely manufacturing, retail and e-commerce becomes very critical in terms of uh, SMBs and startups and well-funded startups. It's an area where we want to focus on. So can we offer these uh, services for them? Agritech is a great opportunity for next generation businesses. Even if you look at India also, we are looking at uh, uh, you know, agritech business. Uh, see, uh, uh, Indian government has now announced in terms of uh, drone as a service. Uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of policies which we can kind of leverage. We want to try and see if we can offer uh, an end-to-end -end offering right from uh, a farm to play uh, and not just you know, uh, one portion of a process. Uh, so, and telecom media entertainment, we have said, which is very important uh, uh, industry vertical, which we are uh, building and uh, senior leaders like Amrita are helping us uh, in this uh, endeavor as well as we build this kind of industry practice. Yeah, so let's go on. And I'm not going to expand this. I'll leave this. This is again, AAA is our application automation and analytics um, uh, vertical, which is your uh, a core, uh, which is, uh, and the IMS or infrastructure management services, which is a classic uh, infrastructure management services. And then we have your BPS and cloud first. So this is how the mix looks. And uh, the new lines of businesses, uh, we're not just, uh, we will start publishing it as and when now these lines are now starting to sell. The good news is that some of the new line of businesses like uh, uh, New Ray Edge, for example, we've got our first customers. That's the good news because most of these technologies which we are proactively building, uh, it is very important that uh, these strategies convert to uh, revenues. The good news is some of the New Ray uh, lines of businesses have been starting to get, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, billable customers. That's the good news. In the next quarter, we'll probably we'll, uh, we'll share different lines of businesses across some of these new lines where we are now starting to book revenue. So again, um, this this is uh, uh, kind of a uh, client makes a top five, 14%. Uh, the, the good news about uh, for us is that, you know, uh, we don't have huge revenue concentration on few customers. It's a big opportunity for us because since we came out of a product division, uh, the services division has a huge opportunity to kind of build on it. It's a, it's a kind of a even spread. Uh, the positive is that we can work on most of the existing accounts and we can farm them and very clear cut uh, opportunities uh, to ensure that, uh, you know, how we could probably uh, build on the existing accounts. And uh, we are now brought in go-to-market uh, teams which are focused on strategic accounts, uh, named, uh, uh, you know, uh, accounts where we want to figure out how we want to expand on it. Uh, we have brought in client partner uh, uh, management uh, kind of concepts to kind of, you know, form some of these uh, accounts. So at least we want to kind of uh, move into a mix where at least one year from now, we want to look at, we got our first uh, at least in a TCV, but when, once we start recognizing these revenues, our, uh, um, our we want to have at least uh, one or two um, accounts which will cross uh, two three million, uh, uh, you know, or uh, five million this year, and the one million plus account list also starts growing because we just added a few more, and this is going to kind of you know constantly grow. So we kind of have this five million uh, bucket, three million, and one million will be the mix we're kind of focusing on. And the bottom of it, we want to stay focused with the, the mid-market and SMB second-up segments. Yep. Thank you. So quickly, uh, just to uh, maybe you know, kind of uh, 
talk about uh, the run grow build uh, strategy update in terms of services and product strategy uh, just to ensure that all of us are on the same page in terms of what we are talking it was very important for all of you all to also understand and support the organization uh, because as we grow together and so that we'll be able to create a wealth for all of us together yeah and so the run uh, business we spoke about it the grow if you look at it uh, just to kind of you know spend a minute in the slide it's cloud first nure is our brand it's led by nure 3i plus Uh, brand which is our oracle powered cloud and because this is kind of a beachhead for all of us you know so where we are going to have the cloud as a beachhead and and then we add on everything else application automation analytics we have maggi which is now we are rebranding our maggi as automation as a service our momenta as analytics as a service flexib is digital quality assurance as a service or a old school testing now we are getting a flexib version 2 which will be now we are working on our cognitive teams are working with the flexib teams to come up with more cognitive self scripting uh, digital testing as well so these are some of the kind of you know shift we are making and we are talking about building an oracle cov very super focused on oracle and uh, uh, it's not just on oci cloud or on but all across even uh, uh, autonomous database in terms of you know um, uh, cloud migration transformation because we see a huge opportunity in the oracle space as well because a lot of legacy customers were to be migrated and uh, you know uh, uh, and and we are trying to build this entire uh, coe and including even apex which is the oracle low code no code uh, platform of course there's a huge focus on digital bps because the convergence of technology digital and uh, uh, business process services uh, and also one of the mature offerings and uh, hopefully we'll be able to the digital bps team and the bpas kps teams will be able to kind of uh, um, bring new customers we have had some good early uh, success in digital clm uh, where we never used to be in clm uh, we used to be a typically a back office shop in back office in bps we have got our first customers in uh, digital uh, uh, clm and customer life cycle management and the uniqueness is we want to be a digital first company we do not want to do anything in classic bps uh, going forward it will be cloud first digital first automation led humanized human together is the mantra which we want to follow very very clearly uh, in terms of the grow the build if you look at it we spoke a lot about it, but i i think i'll spend a few minutes because now we are very really super focused at least for the next year our leadership amrita and uh, some of our other leaders uh, we have got this very very clear cognitive computing services we want to stay focused on smart gauge capital markets telecom media entertainment this is going to be cutting edge analytics in in terms of uh, prescriptive and next best action and very shortly we'll see new products coming out of us uh, and other teams are now uh, hired and we will get do that um um the second thing is also if you look at the entire uh, 5g uh, services if you look at that uh, we are staying focused on sd wan and private networks and in fact uh, uh, hopefully in q4 we will be able to kind of announce some of our wins as well where we are getting getting there edge computing services we have all had our wins in terms of you know edge uh, new ray edge services uh, and the the 5G lab as a service and 5G enabler services something which we are now starting to work and uh, this is very important for us because this will be a huge opportunity where we could work with telcos uh, we can sell through and sell to telcos as well so we want to kind of work with us telco as a ecosystem partner and uh, this is going to be a great opportunity the way i look at it iot and blockchain convergence is something which we want to look at it uh, you know and uh, we will talk more about this as we progress uh, uh, and uh, we want to stay focused in insurance and securities agriculture and green energy uh, and uh, you know fundamentally the whole theme is that you know powered by edge computing services so this is broadly our uh, refresh our memories on our services and product strategy let's move on and just to bring the the numbers back into focus because this is how the business is also aligned and um, hopefully uh, next financial year onwards we'll be able to report out uh, in this fashion and run grow and build so all our shareholders will be able to see how their company is progressing in these three buckets because very important in run we fortify we retain we enhance our margins in grow is where we will focus in driving new revenues new services higher margin and the grow will ultimately replace run over a period of time so fundamentally grow is the new services lines which we want to kind of push build as i explained to you we want to build center of excellences which is short runway uh, uh, centers where we will have a product or a platform uh, or a solution which we can take it to market very quickly so the build will build the coes and will give it to grow for them to monetize so the coes will be having a 2 3 quarter 
maximum two quarters of a runway. COIs are something which will have a little longer runway where we might want to work on white spaces, look at some unique ideas and, you know, work with, uh, uh, could be a huge differentiator, a huge value creator, uh, possibly a unicorn, is something which we want to kind of, you know, uh, kind of stay focused on the build uh, part of it. And uh, um, the other uh, question is, uh, if you look at some of the other highlights, I'm not going to read through it. These, these documents are all available. You can uh, go through them in uh, uh, leisure. Uh, the, the key message for us is, uh, is uh, uh, we have to, the company has to make this balancing act. It's a tough act because from a run, we have to fund the grow and the build. And I need the support and patience of all our shareholders as we turn this company around. And ultimately, you know, run plus grow will be profitable and build will continue to create huge value for our uh, shareholders. Let's go on. And finally, uh, now if you look at it, I want to end with the, the build COE roadmap for the benefit of uh, everyone. Uh, in Q4, and the focus is we want to work with various governments. The, the, the philosophy is very simple. We want to work with governments across not only in India, uh, within even within India, with the state governments and globally also. They signed up with Malaysian government. Similarly, so we have to stay focused on that because you want to kind of work with respective governments, align our energies with regard to their priorities. And it's a mutual win-win private public partnerships in terms of skill development, job creation. Ultimately, as a company, we are able to leverage the benefits the government's going to pass on to us in terms of subsidies, in terms of so, which is ultimately better for our uh, PNL. And in return for the society, we are able to create jobs and um, and and, and, uh, and skill development as well. So that's a clear focus. That's what we want to stay focused. If you look at roadmap Q4, uh, we are now uh, like what Harish said. We're working on building the COE uh, focused on uh, Oracle, focused on BFSI and insurance and uh, one of the hubs we will start in uh, South. Um, and uh, and the Q1, uh, uh, by Q1, we will also probably open one in Northeast. And, uh, and this is very important because A, what are the two biggest problems today? A company like us, our ability to attract talent at the right cost it's a huge struggle in metros. Uh, even all the tier one players have the same problem. So how do we get quality resources? We invest, train, increase, uh, you know, in terms of loyalty. Second, also at the right cost and our ability to kind of, you know, enhance margins. So the COE from a tier three will be a very important strategy across the world. This is not just India. Similarly, in Malaysia, we have already signed up. We are launching there. In US, UK, uh, we are building this and we are now talking uh, with Finland also for the build in terms of 5G technologies. And uh, this is the kind of, you know, short term roadmap between Q4 to Q2. And uh, we will update the shareholders in terms of our progress we make on this. This, again, is a very important strategy for us to kind of maximize our revenues, maximize our margins and uh, have a steady uh, human capital supply chain which will support us because that's the core for all of us. So that, that's, this is a very, very important strategy which we are now working on. So I'll pause here and then I'll take all questions. I think there's a lot of questions in uh, the chat box, I guess. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thompson, sir, for your uh, opening remarks. And uh, I must say it was quite, it was quite uh, elaborate and answered most of the questions. Uh, now we will uh, take the Q&A, we'll move to the Q&A session. Uh, I request everyone who has a question to please, to please raise your hand. And uh, accordingly, we will unmute you. You can unmute yourself and uh, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and the firm that you represent and ask a question. Uh, alternatively, after that, uh, if there are any questions from uh, the investors who have logged in from their handsets, they can uh, use the star and three button to raise their hand. And uh, once we unmute you, you can use a star and six button to unmute yourself and ask a question. 
So we will follow a particular queue or discipline queue in terms of the questions. If anyone has a question to uh, on the, they can also put their questions on the chat box. We'll be more than happy to uh, read the questions and uh, address the same. Purushottam wants to speak and he's asking to unmute. Yeah, one moment. So, sir, uh, before that, I just got a uh, few questions from some analysts. Uh, can we take those questions first? You have uh, WhatsApp. I'm, I'm okay. It's your. It, it, yeah, sure. yeah, and there are a lot of questions in the chat box. Also, I can even answer them. And so, you might take the questions. Yeah. Sure. So, uh, sir, there is uh, one Miss Riddhi. She's uh, from IDBI Caps. So, her question is. Uh, what is our investment going to be in the grow and run business? And uh, yeah, so typically this is what uh, CCIT and this at IDBI Capital. What is the investment in the grow and run business? Yeah, see, as I said, I've been considering things. Even right now, if you look at it, uh, we are already investing. Even in our current uh, balance sheet and PL, we are kind of you know investing from our running uh, operations itself. But I think the next financial year, we will have it very, very clearly uh, segregated. And uh, where uh, definitely, if you look at it, uh, next financial year, we are looking at at least a minimum um, uh, two, three million investment for starters. I'm just saying, if you ask me uh, offhand right now, uh, immediately in the build business, which, we'll, uh, which we will start because we have an annual operating plan working on the build to at least a minimum three million dollars dedicated for that. Uh, to build it so that we get some immediate results in the next two quarters we'll, we'll, because we, we don't have a long runway also. So we need to have some products and platforms. And the build teams are working very closely with the growth teams uh, to figure out and saying that, okay, what is that we can take to market? So that's why we decided on mortgage, capital markets and some of these areas. So that should be on a short-term investment on the build team. Uh, the grow team, if you look at it, uh, if, if you look at our grow numbers itself, fundamentally, uh, right now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, uh, you know, Sanjay, we're already almost uh, around 26 growth, right, you know, in terms of uh, the sales uh, investments we are making. Now, even if you break it down, uh, at least 50% of that is going towards our grow business, uh, you know, uh, what we're investing right now. So almost like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, almost like at least uh, 1.5 to 2 million investment we are making in grow absolutely uh, you're right thomas you're right yeah because this this is going to be very important because that's the adrenaline we get need to get into the high margin business because this entire grow business uh, the current uh, run organizations uh, will not be able to get the same type of the, the quality of revenues which we want to get in the future so these are like two parallel tracks the way we look at it so the grow business is more like an end to end organization it's not just sales We'll have his own COEs. We'll have it our own practice. Uh, and kind of the important point is also in the industry orientation of these practices. So we need to invest in all that. So to summarize, I think it is uh, more or less like, you know, we are talking about uh, 3 million in grow and 3 million in uh, build. Uh, but grow will be a self-generation organization because the cash flows uh, and they'll generate cash very quickly. And that's their uh, uh, objective. And they'll have to break even very quickly and generate profits on the road. Sure, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, we will now move on to the questions asked by uh, Mr. Purushottam. Uh, I'm going to unmute you. Please unmute yourself and ask a question. Uh, first of all, thanks uh, for giving me this opportunity. I have uh, two questions to ask. One is with regard to the revenue movement. If you look at it in IT, we generally see a sequential growth in terms of revenue quarter on quarter, essentially coming from the new book and build that you do, and also taking care of some of the uh, leakage that will happen on account of some of the bad accounts, which every organization will have. I understand in case of 3i, you would have some accounts where you have to drop it because the margins are low and uh, consciously you have taken a call to move towards a higher margin accounts, higher margin business. But then the new business, what you're getting, and I see considerable amount of new wins coming in last couple of years, should be able to outdo this leakage of revenue, which is not happening as a, is a concern. So uh, rather than seeing a sequential growth, we see a sequential drop. Second, 
uh, with regard to the employee cost, which is actually, I mean, I was just going through all your competitors in uh, Indian IT. Uh, 3i Infotech seems to be the highest in terms of uh, uh, employee cost, uh, percentage of revenue. Uh, if I look at your FY19 December results, you are somewhere around 55 to 58 percent employee cost, uh, employee cost percentage of revenue, which was in line with the industry. But last quarter, you have reported close to say around 83 percent of employee cost to your revenue, which is highest. I mean, uh, I take Happiest Mind, TCS, Infosys, Wipro, Mindtree, whatever. They are all operating below 60 percent. Why the employee cost should be so high? And in case this is the kind of employee cost 3i has, then how are you going to make profits? No, no, great question, Pushwakum. I, I think the first part, I think we need to set basic baselines, right? It's a very, very important question you asked me, Pushwakum. First of all, this company is just nine months old. There is no history in this because, see, before past 31st, Pushwakum, we were a product-led company. All your statistics are fantastic. We didn't grow for the last five years. We were more or less hovering around 1,000 crores or 1,100 crores. And you're spot on, which is 55%, because we had a product division, which had a high margin, and the service division were there. When you just took together, if you look at the old results, now post March 31st, first right now, this company is like as good as a new company, product division has gone off. So our baseline should be effective first April. That's the first point. Okay. Now, what we've inherited today. Once the product division has gone off, is the services business. Unlike any other company right now, if you look at it, where all of us have worked also, if you ask them, right now our problem is we are predominantly country to country business. It is US to US, UK to UK, Middle East to Middle East, India to India is where we are today. That is what we started off this business on 1st April. Our export mix, which is a ODC mix, compared to market which you spoke about, is the straight opposite. So that is the answer. Fundamentally, 80% is country to country business, 20% is ODC. Any of the peers you spoke about will be the straight opposite. That is the organization we have inherited in 1st April post the car work. So our reference point is only 1st of April. Anything to do with previously has got no reference or no bearing because the company was in CDR, company had its tough times, we had to do that car work. We are now settled on our creditors. Now, in fact, somebody was also asking, you know, creditors have been settled. There's another question I saw in the chat box. Now, what is the value for our shareholders or states so far? So if you look at it, it is this nine months is where we are now trying to turn around this company, which is the run business I keep talking about. And you're spot on. Our current mix of employees will not work. That's why our GM is 15%. Otherwise, market GMs are very high. So the new business in grow, we want to do exactly like our peers. At least we want to be on parity with peers. All the names you spoke about is what we want to be in parity. Every Even the new accounts we have signed up right now have all got GMs upward of 30-35% after huge competition with the big boys. So that's what we are doing. And second to your question, you had a very interesting question you asked me, Prashatman, because you said typically we all, in a... Year on your steady state business, what you said is spot on. Now look at us as like a startup. We took it on 1st April. We are sitting and doing all the cleanups. Right now, from right from our fundamentals, we are cleaning up, cleaning up our customers. Our new funnel, new engines have now come in. All the order books, revenues will only come in Q1 and Q2. So we don't have any, uh, you know, from last year or whatever, some big orders which we are now uh, ramping up. So what we have got is whatever existing revenue, we are preserving it, fortifying it, trying to see if we can increase our margins, eliminate all the non-profitable customers. The new business which we are getting will get us business only in Q4 and Q1 and Q2. So to your point, theoretically, you are spot on, Mr. Purushat, you are spot on. Any other mature company which has a, a five years of business which is running, it's no big deal. You'll have a quarter on quarter growth. Every IT company is doing that. The way we look at it ourselves is that it's like a startup because we started out nine months ago and we're building it. But I agree from a shareholder perspective, you've been with us, you've been patient with us for the last 10 years. Of course, you, you might be getting impatient, but we have to now relook at it, reset, and then you know, together we have to create value. So that's my response to you. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have a follow-up question. Uh, 
So what are the various clients we can expect and the margins and investment in the cloud first business going forward? In fact, I, I said, you know, the, the latest win which we had in US itself, you know, which we had a media release as well, is a template by itself. Now, if you, I, I'll just spend a few minutes on the type of the deal which we are now done, right? If you look at the deal, the it, 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 it has maybe two, three tracks. One is we are replacing the cloud service provider, which is a typically 12% margin business. It's a kind of a run rate business. We are replacing a managed services provider, which is around 35% to 40% GM business. And then we are also being a transformation partner. So kind of a blended margin of around 35%, 40% GM is where it is. So this business can be replicated. The second unique thing is what we're telling our customer is, you don't worry about your customers. So fundamentally, it is like a B2B2B. Now, all your existing customers of our customer, we migrate, we manage, and it's predictable business. And it is per customer one-stop shop solution for them also. It's predictable uh, in terms of uh, their planning. That's the step number one. The second thing is all scale, they don't have to worry about it. When they there is a 2x scale, we have got this box. We have got this pre-configured solution by which we can help them scale. So this is a very unique commercial model as well, you know, which we are now trying to, you know, uh, innovate. So this particular deal itself will help us uh, kind of replicate this across the world. In fact, we are now bringing in very focused, cloud-first-led sales teams across the world to just take the success story across. It's a massive opportunity. Same if you look at even Oracle COE, why we are betting on Oracle? Because Oracle has got huge amount of legacy customers. If you look at what Larry Allison spoke, out of the 25,000 customers, you know, the, the people who are yet to be migrated is almost close to 18,000 globally. Look at the size. Now, somebody like us now, we are exactly betting on that. So for us as a small company, it's a wise bet to just bet on that. Even if you get a small percentage of that as a preferred partner, I think it's a huge business for us. Thank you, sir. Uh, again, Riddhi from IDBI, she, her question is, Oh, give me one moment. You know, she's, we'll just get back to her. In the meantime, we will just take uh, the next person. Uh, Mr. Shaju Perincheri. Uh, I'm unmuting you. Please unmute yourself and ask a question. Hi, good afternoon to you all. Hi, good afternoon, Mr. Shaji. It's a pleasure to join you, but uh, with 10 plus and uh, seeing the results, we all thought uh, everything what you've been doing will start earning some results and positivity will come through. But that's not happening. I want to express my concern. Uh, specifically, there is a uh, changes in the senior management uh, quite often that needs to be looked at. You need to bring people who are capable and who can lead. That is, that is very important. Secondly, this uh, nine crores of expenses for the redemption of uh, those instruments. I was, I'm wondering why it wasn't factored in, in the last quarter or from the very beginning itself. You know, this is something which is not really uh, understandable. Third, is there any more special expenses or uh, something exceptional going to hit us like these last quarters happened? Now, the last one, you talk about grow, build, run and all. Is it next quarter going to be profitable? Uh, Mr. Penanchari, uh, could you mention which firm do you represent? I, I work for KSK Capital, but it's an investment company from 
um, uh, Emirates, but I, I'm just speaking on my personal capacity. I, okay. I'm a significant investor in the company. Yeah. So, Mr. Sajja, I'll, I'll take your questions. I'll take them uh, uh, one by one. Uh, the first question is uh, in terms of uh, leadership change, I'm not sure because uh, uh, including myself, when we took over, we have been building uh, a strong leadership today. Uh, in front of, we have been able to attract some real top talent to join us. And uh, if you can see our website now, we have uh, brought that. And uh, recently also, we have been able to attract some uh, top talent in our board as well to kind of give us the guidance and you know uh, uh, strategic direction. Uh, so that I don't think uh, you will have a concern there because we will have a very very uh, stable. Uh, committed leadership and all of us are uh, bound by one thing uh, because see for us now the accountability is very very high because um, this is a, a professional entrepreneurship for all of us you know personally because the lack of a, a clear promoter the accountability on the management team is very very high so people who come and join us are all bound by the same uh, you know a DNA or the theme uh, Mr. Shadi, which I can assure you that and uh, that's really going to make a change. That is uh, point number one. Uh, the, the, the second point which you spoke about is when will we start seeing the fruits of this uh, run, grow and build? So I think in all fairness, uh, which I would want to probably uh, spend a minute. Now, the car out happened, the deal happened. And uh, I, I think, you know, it was... Uh, 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 one of the very, how do I say, uh, the shortest time in which we have probably done a car out team. Maybe I do not know somebody has to check up the MA space in Dallas. So, post that, it, it's like, you know, the new team had to take up the plane when the, the old team has now bailed out. It's as simple as that. And, you know, we have to keep flying the plane across the Atlantic Ocean. That's what we are doing right now. So, the two quarters, first two quarters was spent on, to your point, to ensure that. We set the right baseline, the right foundation to ensure we don't have any surprises. So one is, if you look at all that what we have done, whether proactively booking, uh, you know, slow moving depths, whatever it is, whichever is not done before. I'm not one going to go back to the past. I'm just saying from this, well, from this team has taken over. We've been kind of cleaning it up to ensure that we don't get surprises. To your point, we don't have any more surprises. So whichever, if you look at the surprises are, the costs are either related to the deal-related cost, which we are maybe paying this year. Second, which is, uh, you know, typically we should have probably provisioned, maybe we are not provisioned, for whatever reason we are doing it now. So it's like a one-time cleanup which we are doing right now. To your point, I don't think I have my other senior colleagues in this call also. We will not have any more exceptional uh, surprises. But please understand, this company has a 20-year, 20 25-year-old history. So um, I could say that you know we will not have any more, you know, uh, surprises which is going to kind of you know, rock us uh, at least in the near term, which is uh, for sure. From a current business perspective, if I look at it, uh, you, you spoke about when are we going to see the results of this uh, grow and build. So if you look at what run business which we inherited, that was not aligned to 2022 and further. Let's be very clear about it. I'm not mincing words. Because 3i was a product company. 3i generated profits only using its products. It also did services. Now, once product is sold off, now we'll have to figure out how to be profitable as a standalone services organization and also in parallel try and see if we can invest in products and other stuff. So it's a very, very interesting journey which we are having right now in this transformation phase. So, all the source, seeds which you are sowing, which will start giving us results in the coming quarters, in Q4, Q1, and Q2, we will have because we are now slowly building the pipeline and also the new deals, which will start recognizing. Even if you look at our deal, which we closed in US, our main revenues will start coming in uh, Q1 and Q2. So, all these upsides will start coming and which will start changing our uh, numbers positively, Mr. Shaji. That is the uh, the third question, and you had uh, one more question. I missed it. Did I answer all your questions? Engage surprises. Uh, did I answer it? 
I think I've answered all your questions. One more point was there, Thompson, uh, on on whether we could have taken the nine point six crore uh, in the earlier quarters. Yeah. Um, you know that is measured. Uh, you know based on actual. Uh, you know arising of that liability you know if you if you read the india's 109 so we have we have taken the accounting standard the respective accounting standard and accordingly you know provided because this is is an early redemption of uh, of of the debt and you know considering the future uh, cash flows so it's accounting as of as of that date so all of the liabilities we had anyway taken you know taken provisions as of september yeah absolutely yeah thanks thanks sanjay for that hopefully i've answered uh, shaji's questions i guess thank you sir we'll go to the next uh, participant uh, mr siddarth gupta please uh, mention the name of the company you represent and mute yourself and ask your question bill and i'm also speaking in an individual capacity as an investor uh along with a few questions i have uh, some comments for the management as well uh and for i apologize i missed the first few minutes of the presentation so if they've been answered um it goes without saying that uh, share even though you need shareholder support and even though shareholders are willing to extend it shareholders are currently quite unhappy with how the share is performing on the markets uh so largely the first question is with regard to the esos policy because we've been seeing a lot of them being vested and uh, in being traded on the market so uh, and that's seen a dil- dilution of about 3 to 4% in the uh, company's equity so uh, can we have some more details as to at what rate are being vested is there a vesting period how much more dilution is expected in the near future or that has been accounted for uh the next thing that i wanted to ask you was about the exceptional loss you didn't mention why it has happened but it's been happening for the all uh, three quarters where we've been seeing exceptional items popping up uh you have mentioned that you don't expect any more negative surprises but uh is there anything at all in the future that you would want us to account for um uh thirdly uh this is more of a comment rather than a question is uh why aren't the deals that are being won by the company the bamboo rose one and the one with malaysia being publicized by the company we're not seeing a very aggressive thing on in terms of creating shareholder information and knowledge there are no press releases being filed with the exchange nothing of that sort no deal value being announced i think today was the first time as a shareholder i've heard that uh, the deal with bamboo rose was for 20 million dollars over a five year period which might be a 30 million dollar deal but uh, this i mean just posting about it on your social media won't really help uh, secondly what kind of revenue inflow can we expect from the malaysia deal uh, in the future and uh, in general are there any plans for any qips or bringing in any strategic investors that the management is aware of because right now what i'm feeling is that although the management is taking a lot of steps there isn't accurate shareholder value, value being created i mean the share is down 40% from its highs that too despite it being an undervalued share so as much as a patient shareholder wants to support the company it is a massive test of patience that's being undertaken no no thank thanks sir so that uh, for your uh, valuable inputs and comments i'll try and answer i think there's a question on esops i'll try and answer that or harish you want to answer that or you you are raising your hand yeah i thought i'll just give a background about the esops thing yeah, yeah. that like yeah. there have been a lot of questions uh, yes. in this forum as well as uh, mails that we have received as uh, well so i think the concerns are being raised by the number of stock op- shares that's getting allocated to employees right now and uh, it's being published by the stock exchanges so just wanted to give them a brief about how the entire process works and uh, so that like all of us are on the same page quite a few of them who are aware of the stock option schemes within the organizations will be aware of it but for the uh, benefit of the large audience so the shares which are getting allocated now are ideally shares which have been granted to the employees under 2013 and 2018 scheme so these grants the tradition uh, the, the process uh, that an uh, esos goes through is first there is a grant of option then there is a vesting of option and then there is an allocation of shares so the grant of these shares have been done way back in 2013 2018 and 19 and each allocation each grant will be split into three parts 33% over 3 years 
So that's how it gets allocated uh, to a, a, like granted to vested to each of the employees. And after one year, when the grant converts into a vest, that is when he can exercise it. And when he exercises it, it gets allocated. So we are, as an organization, not allocating any stock options to employees. Now, all that you are seeing now being uh, published by the stock exchanges are allocations which have happened granted historically. So that's one clarification we which we wanted to put on record here so that like all of us are aware that it is not an allocation of stock options uh, being done at the uh, current moment. It has been done historically. So that's what I wanted to clarify, Thompson, be given like a brief about the knowing the brief yeah, about yeah. the history. Yeah, so, yeah. Thanks, thanks, Harish. So, so Siddharth, to that point, I think uh, Harish has clarified the ESOPs one. But definitely on the ESOPs point, you know, Siddharth, we will be coming back to the shareholders because see, to attract talent, and to get best people to work for us, unless people like our shareholders, employees also, now everybody's worried about wealth creation. So nobody's going to work for a fixed. So we will have to come back with more, uh, you know, competitive schemes. And we will come back to you guys on that because that's very, very important for us to attract talent. And uh, But for this current one, which I think, uh, you know, Harish has uh, answered it. And predominantly, if you look at it, 80% uh, of people who have exercised our employees who have moved out to essential, correct? Uh, uh, yep, right, Thompson. More or less 80% are employees, our old colleagues who have moved out to Essentio, or people who have existed. Uh, that is one. So, that, to your question, you also had another question, you know, because it was a kind of a mix of comments versus uh, questions. One is uh, what type of revenue which we could get in some of the large deals which you spoke about, at least uh, assured revenue, we could look at it at least around, uh, uh, you know, uh, $2 million. Do, 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 I'm being very conservative because. Uh, those are the numbers which we are focused on, uh, you know, kind of allocating, you know, AOP. But like any other uh, large engagements, it's up to us to accelerate the, uh, you know, conversion of revenues for us because it's for us to kind of, you know, uh, move all the customers to our clouds and, uh, you know, kind of get the revenue. So we will try and see how to accelerate. But I think, you know, more or less we can, you know, look at uh, uh, between both the uh, strategic initiatives, we will kind of get almost like, you know, uh, $2 million uh, or uh, uh, for next year and also that's an upside of at least you know uh, gms of 30 percent is what uh, we look at the revenue exchange in this new uh, line of business um you spoke about uh, a point taken i think we did our best in terms of uh, media releases and uh, you know uh, stuff on this i think we should improve it uh, in terms of communicating more and more uh, in this more uh, digital world we will take that feedback uh, uh, siddharth on the point you mentioned and uh, you also asked a question in terms of uh, uh, strategic investors and stuff. And I, I'm, I'm, and uh, definitely as a team, uh, we will be working on it uh, to try and see how we can attract uh, uh, more strategic investors, investors in the organization uh, to help us, you know, uh, uh, you know, fulfill the dream of this and the vision of this company. Definitely, we will be uh, looking at it and uh, and be working with our board as well to see how we can uh, do that for sure. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have a follow-up question from Riddhi again. Uh, what is the time cycle for uh, this model from built uh, to grow to run? How long would it take for a company, for a client to... Uh, to no, no, it's, no it's, it's an excellent question. Excellent question. And build, as I said, there are two, two tracks. One is the COE and the COI. The COE, we are now talking about not more than two quarters. So in two quarters... The build team should be able to create a commercial grade prototype, product slash platform, or which is ready for go to market. So, from a build cycle, it will be two quarters for us to start recognizing revenue by the grow organization. And uh, typically, the grow cycle is any line of business depending on how we'll mature. And the grow, as I said, will be an independent uh, PL organization. Depends on the complexity of the business, we will stabilize it. So anything between 12 to 18 months will be the grow to run cycle where it will stabilize and then it becomes like an ongoing run. Uh, this is typically the stuff. And more complex uh, build projects which we spoke about could take around three to four quarters is what we want to kind of limit. But all build projects will be from three to 12 months at the max, you know, which is uh, we want to keep it very agile, fast uh, and, uh, you know, fail fast kind of a strategy is what we want to look at. Thank you so much, sir. We'll go to the next question from Mr. Manas Singh. Please uh, unmute yourself. Uh, please mention the company you represent and go ahead with your question.
Yes, Mr. Man Singh, you have been unmuted. Yeah. Mr. Singh? Hello. Yeah, hello. Yeah, yeah. You audible, please go ahead. Yeah. So uh, I'm calling from Phoenix Consulting. Uh, what is your ROE on your current investment, which we are doing quarter on quarter? On the current investments? Yes. Right now, I, I don't think, you know, maybe you want to take this question, Sanjay, because I don't have a off-the-cuff number straight away. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we would uh, get back to you uh, on that. We will get back to you on the return on equity that we have right now. Uh, but it would be, you know, kind of negative anyway because our, you know, uh, our bad is... Anyway no, no, I think Sanjay, his question is, I think if I clarify Mr. Singh's question, he's talking about the new investments we are making. I think that's yes, his question. Yes. Yeah. No, re because new investments we, we, we have to evaluate. We'll get back to you on that. Yes. Yeah, because see, Mr. Singh, most of the investments we have made is, as I told you, uh, is only in Q3, you know, because Q1 was more strategy stage. Uh, Q2, we started kind of, you know, uh, translating the strategy to action. And the real, you know, investments have gone in Q3, Mr. Singh. Uh, so probably we'll answer that question maybe by Q4 and we'll be able to probably put a slide on that, you know, and try and also track and see what these investments are, you know, uh, giving us back. You know? So we will track that. I'll take that input from you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Uh, we will take the last question from uh, Mr. Vaibhav Bajatya. Please uh, unmute yourself. Uh, also mention the name of the firm you represent. And go ahead and ask a question. Uh, yeah, so I'm Vaibhav Bajatya from Honesty and Integrity Investment. Uh, so actually all my questions have been answered. I had the questions around uh, uh, the continuity of the exceptional item and, uh, uh, and the details of investments that you are doing in other expenses. So I think you have already answered it. Uh, that's all uh, I have. That's all I have. Uh, to ask. So uh, that has been answered. Thank you. Thank you, Vaibhav. Uh, so that would have been the last question. I hand it over to you, sir, Thompson, sir, for your closing remarks. Okay. Hey, uh, thanks, Naida. And, and I also see, uh, I'm also trying to see the chat box. There are a lot of uh, interesting questions which have come from a lot of uh, attendees. I'm just trying to see if I've answered everything, more or less. Uh, I'll be more than happy to answer one last there. So we see the revenue range. I think there's a lot of questions in terms of revenue per employee. I think I tried answering that because that's the current revenue mix which is there because it's predominantly country to country and we'll have to kind of change the mix in terms of, you know, the offshore, near shore mix has to change and the digital uh, mix has to change. I think there are a lot of questions around that uh, in terms of other IT peers because obviously the, the other IT peers obviously have the straight opposite of this. Uh, and that's why I said our current GM is at this level. And that's the task for the organization also to move forward. Uh, there is a lot of questions. Somebody is asking a guidance for Q4. Um, yeah, uh, does the legacy cost is over or left? I think we answered that in terms of saying, yes, of course, uh, most of the legacy costs are done. And uh, we do not want to carry anything into the future. And, you know, we want to have a clean state by which we want to kind of do that. Uh, I guess you have presented it all well. Uh, sir, I, one second. I'm just seeing any other questions. Snyder, you want to also see the chat box so that we can answer? Sure, sir. Yeah, I see one question uh, on uh, why there's a tax if the company is in a loss. Uh, that's because, you know, one of our uh, subsidies, our subsidy in the US um, is a profitable subsidy. And that's the reason, you know, we have a, we have a tax uh, which is coming in the books. Uh, yeah, and we see the tax uh, overall the ETR to be lower going forward as, you know, the profits are getting split across uh, within the subsidiary. So, we definitely find, uh, see that the overall ETR would be, you know, kind of lower in Q4. Yeah. I think there's a, you need a fresher program to hire. I think Mr. Singh is talking, I spoke about it. I think we are taking the same strategy in terms of these COEs and tier threes where we want to build it. Um, somebody also asked, uh, uh, can we start representing this run, grow and 
build pnls independently i think you know harish and sanjay i think we will start doing it from a reporting perspective also right you know so that it's aligned i think there are a lot of questions around that uh and the same i think can you get us some questions so i think we can take these questions uh, later on on a one on one basis yeah maybe i think as a as a uh, i think uh, side up maybe you should uh, we should formally respond to each one of them uh, because there are a lot of questions we tried our best to answer most of the questions i think uh, we should uh, probably uh, respond to them yeah. independently as well yep yes sir. yes sir uh, uh participants you can uh, feel free to get in touch with uh, uh, at factors or 3i directly for with your questions we'll be more than happy happy to address all your questions for now yeah. i hand it over to thompson sir for your closing remarks yeah. thanks thanks uh, sir and thanks everybody i think it was a uh, uh, extremely you know uh, great questions uh, great comments great inputs uh, we are a listening organization we take all your valuable inputs and feedback and uh, uh, and we will continually try to see how we can you know do a better job and a uh, uh, lot of inputs a lot of learnings for me also today and uh, we will try and see how to kind of you know quickly uh, turn around the company and uh, start uh, you know uh, you know uh, creating profits for all of us and you know i created more value for all of you all thank you all for your support and patience and uh, you know trust in us thanks you all thank you thompson sir thank you thank you everyone for attending this call we look forward towards your attendance next quarter Thank you thanks and have a great day. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you.